Hello, in this video, I'm going to tell you all about Q angle. So I'll tell you what it is, how we measure it, and then I'll go into how to interpret the Q angle and how it's useful. Um, so what is the Q angle? It stands for quadriceps angle. It's the relationship between the ASIS, so the anterior superior iliac spine up here in the anterior side of the pelvis. So it's the relationship between the ASIS, the midpoint of the patella, and the tibial tuberosity. Um, so it's an indication of the biomechanical function of the lower extremity. So the Q, uh, the Q angle uh, should be within a certain range, and that tells us that the angle of the quadriceps relative to the patella and the line of pull uh, where it inserts, where the quadriceps insert into the um, tibial tuberosity, it tells us if that angle is healthy and correct, and if their biomechanical function of the lower extremities is good. Um, so it determines the tracking of the patella as uh, a way to quantify the line of pull of the quadriceps and the patellar tendon. Um, so to measure the Q angle, we can do that with a goniometer, um, or you can take a picture like this and then draw lines uh, and then measure the angle that way. Um, but you would draw two lines that are going to form an angle. You need one line that goes from the ASIS and then passes through the center of the patella. And then one line that goes from the tibial tuberosity and passes through the center of the patella. So then the angle that's formed between those two lines is the Q angle. Okay, so how do we interpret that measurement? Um, so it is normal for the Q angle to be between 12 and 20 degrees. Um, males generally have a lower Q angle, so towards the bottom of that range, and females are generally towards the top of that range. Uh, that's because female pelvises tend to be a bit wider, which would naturally make that Q angle a little bit larger because that one line would be angled out a little bit further to align with the ASIS. Um, now, it's considered high and abnormal um, if that angle is above 20. Um, so when it's above 20, it will increase the lateral pull of the quadriceps on the patella. So essentially, the, the quads are pulling the patella in the lateral direction. So it creates more stress and tension on the tracking of the patella, um, which over time can be a problem. It'll create muscular imbalances. It can also, over time, wear away and damage the cartilage that's on the posterior side of the patella. Um, it also will contribute to patellar tendinopathies and patellar pathologies of a variety of different types and make the patellas more prone to dislocation or subluxation. Um, it also can lead to excessive foot pronation, which in turn then causes excessive internal rotation of the tibia, which makes the patellar problem even worse. Um, so it, it sort of is like a, a little feedback loop there, a little closed system where um, the pull of the quads on the patella causes the feet to pronate, which causes the patella to be in an even worse position. Um, it also, if we have a high number here, could indicate genuverum or knock-kneed position like we see in the picture here. Um, so in some cases, it's a matter of pulling the patella too far, but in some cases, it's a matter of the knees coming too close together, and then that makes that angle higher. Um, when this, when the Q angle is low, so under 12, that is not very common. You know, we much more often see the opposite problem. It's usually excessive rather than too low, uh, but it can be too low. And in that case, the person would also be uh, at risk of developing patellar pathologies like I described. Um, and it also could indicate genuverus or bow-legged, which is like we see in the picture here. So where we have that angulation, um, facing inward instead of facing outward. Um, so we have varus instead of valgus. Um, so also abnormal, not healthy. Um, but again, that could be the result of the position of the knees and or hips as opposed to the tracking of the patella. So it could be either one and it requires further assessment to figure out more of what is causing this problem and then also what is the solution depending on what is causing it. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.